Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to introduce you to the application Blender. We're going to use Blender, which is a 3D modeling application, to create our 3D assets that we're going to put into our game. This could be anything from weapons, to the level itself, to rocks, Anything that shows up in our game is going to be an asset that we're going to have to create in 3D. Now most tutorials won't cover how to create these things in 3D, but we're going to go ahead and try to do it anyway. Now if you want a more in-depth tutorial in Blender, uh, I suggest that you head over to the playlist, which I'll link down in the description below, for a better series on Blender and the different aspects of Blender. We will cover everything that you need to know in order to model your assets in Blender, such as the actual 3D modeling, creating textures and materials, and so much more, but we're going to introduce these concepts little by little throughout the Unreal course. So if you just want to start building stuff in Blender and pull it in over to Unreal, then go ahead and watch those series first, come back, create the assets, and then in the next couple videos we'll throw those into Unreal and start playing with our game. All right, so let's get started introducing you to Blender 3D. All right, first of all, what is Blender? I kind of explained it a little bit, but it is a 3D modeling tool. It's free, which I like, and most of my students like that as well. And Unreal is also free. So all these tools to create games, everything is going to be free. We try to make everything as affordable as possible, and you can't get better than free. It's open source and it's updated monthly. So you might actually be using a slightly different version than I am at the time of this recording, but that's okay. In Blender, we're able to create 3D models and animations for things like websites, games, like in our case. You can also do video and so much more. You can export those models to an image, just a static still image. Animations, so that's a number of images end to end. You can make videos out of these that you can place on YouTube or whatnot. You can also place this in a browser with no plugins needed using a technology called WebGL. And of course, Blender also supports virtual reality. And I want to really stress that Blender can do anything. You may have heard of Maya, you may have heard of 3ds Max, but, and I'm quoting here, now, open source software like Blender can do almost everything Pixar software can do. This is from a Pixar senior scientist. And it's really true, Blender can do almost anything that these big brands and big name software packages can do. And so I'm not handicapping you at all by teaching you the software. In fact, I think Blender is going to be taking a bigger hold on the industry come in the future as they introduce some new technologies that they've announced. All right, so obviously Blender is a 3D modeling tool. This is what we keep saying. And you can see kind of the, the workflow and the animations that we can create from this. You can also do 3D sculpting. So as if you were sculpting from clay, it allows you to do that. In addition to being a 3D animation tool, Blender also has a little trick up its sleeve and it can also animate 2D as well. On the right hand side with this image here, we have what's called a rig. It allows us to animate our character by pulling and pushing these little things like a puppeteer would with a marionette. So that's what we call rigging. And you can see here on the right with this example model, all the different little pieces that we can use to manipulate different things such as facial expressions, cheekbones, hands, fingers, etc. Now another little trick is that Blender actually is a 3D game engine. It supports the program language Python, so you never really have to leave Blender in order to make a game. But of course, if you want the full power of Unreal, we'll pull our assets into that. We can also hand paint 3D models, so it has a built-in 3D paint tool that we can use with a, with a stylus if we want to. It's also a video editor, so if you want a really good video editor for free, try using Blender. It's actually really good. We can also composite images, and this is really nice because these are non-destructive ways of changing your image. So with Photoshop, you can apply different layers and, and that may or may not uh, be destructive to your image. I mentioned that Blender supports Python as a programming language. This is not only to support the game engine, but you can also programmatically create models, move them around, animate things based on different criteria of your code. So this is really, really powerful. We won't get into this in this course, but feel free to explore it on your own. Blender has a really nice feature that we're able to mix live action and 3D together using green screens and things like that, just like Hollywood movies do. All right, so here's some quick examples of what we can do with Blender. This is an example of hand painting the grime around a trash can. Uh, you can see kind of the effect that we can have in our game, in Unreal, just using painting and some models from Blender. All right, so here's some resources that I will link to in the description below and elsewhere. All right, so that's a quick introduction to Blender, and we're gonna go ahead and model a hallway 
Uh, you can see an example here on the top right hand corner. We're going to just do a corridor for right now and then in other videos we're going to apply materials and everything like that. But I just want to show you how to do basic navigation and creation in Blender and then the exporting of that asset into Unreal so that we're able to pull that into our scene and eventually get it to look like the scene that we have down in the bottom right hand corner. So again, it's a very simple example, but it illustrates a number of important ideas and techniques. So let's get started using Blender. All right, so go to the blender.org website and you might see the website uh, slightly different than I do here, but there should be a download Blender and again, the version number might be slightly different, but that's okay. Go ahead and press that button and then find your platform of choice. So we have Windows, we have Mac, and we have Linux. But go ahead and install it, and then when you return, we'll have Blender already installed and pulled up. Okay, so once you install Blender and open it for the first time, you should see something very similar to this. Now, if we uh, click off anywhere that's not this splash screen, we should get our default 3D scene here. We have a camera here on the left. We have our 3D default cube in the center here at our origin, and we have a light to light the scene. Now, before we get into Blender and any of its components, let's go ahead and go up to the file menu and go down to user preferences. So upon opening user preferences, what we're going to do is we're going to first change the tab at the top here to input. And you may have noticed if you ever try to go into Blender and try to select anything that it was just moving this little kind of crosshair thing around. And that's because by default, Blender selects with the right mouse button. If you're used to selecting things with the left mouse button, like most of us are, go ahead and select with the left mouse button. The next thing we want to do is, especially if you are on a laptop is we want to emulate the, the numpad. This will allow us to jump into different views. And again, if you're on a laptop, we want to select this. And this also works if you have a full keyboard as well. So this is up to you, but we'll show you what this looks like in a second. All right, the next thing I need you to do is go up into editing and under undo, we're going to change the number of undo steps from 32 to 256, which is the max. Hit enter. And what this will allow us to do is undo different changes that we make with our model more than 32 times. More, more often than not, I get stuck as I'm moving things around that I've exceeded that 32 limit, and then it just deletes the history after that. So set us something pretty high, and let's get started with Blender. First, do save user settings, and this will persist all these different settings between launches of Blender. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove this cube. We're going to create a corridor, and that corridor is going to have two lines and a flat plane for the floor. Okay, and so this cube doesn't match any of that stuff, and so we're going to go ahead and delete it. So if you hit the X key, that'll go ahead and bring up this delete menu, and you need to click with your mouse button to delete that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is add a plane for our floor for this corridor so that we can bring this into Unreal. But the first thing I want to talk about is what this little crosshair thing is first. This is called the 3D cursor. And the 3D cursor has a lot of different applications. We'll just talk about the main one first. And it is whenever I add any mesh to this scene, it's going to add it at this 3D cursor. So if you've been playing around with Blender and maybe you have it over here or over here because you were trying to select stuff and it just got out of, out of the origin, go over here to the right menu, there's a little plus and hit that and it'll open up this menu. And we can have, and we have this little area for 3D cursor and you can see where the 3D cursor's location is. Just go ahead and zero all this out by just selecting and hitting zero for everyone. And as I do that, you can see that the 3D cursor slowly moves back toward the origin. And once it's in the origin, I can hit shift and A at the same time, and that'll bring up an add menu. And we wanna add a mesh, and that type of mesh is a plane. So if you just go ahead and select that, it'll add a plane to our scene. All right, so we wanna get a, a slightly better view of our plane. So let's talk about navigation in Blender. Hopefully you have a three button mouse and if you have a middle mouse wheel, if you click that mouse wheel, that middle mouse wheel and move the mouse to the right and to the left and up and down, you can, you can tumble and rotate around our plane. 
If I roll that mouse wheel up or down, it zooms out or in. Okay, so we wanna get a, a better view of our plane here. I'm gonna zoom in so that the x-axis is going left to right and the y-axis is coming at us. We wanna set up our corridor to be four meters wide and about three meters tall. So let's talk about units real quick. If I go over here to the third tab, uh, this one called scene and click on it, we have units down here and make sure that your unit pre-select is down to meters. And if I select that, you can see that all these values that I just changed, including the 3D cursor down here, everything turns to meters. Units of measure in Blender are called Blender units and they match up one-to-one -one with Blender units to meters. And this is exactly what Unreal does. And so if we make something four meters in Blender, we can pull that into Unreal and have that also be four meters as well. And this is just giving you an idea of what the units in Blender are so that you can gauge how wide something should be. Okay, so I think, um, I think a corridor that's about four meters wide is, is just fine for our purposes. And we'll build the walls up here in a second. I need to alter this mesh so that it's a slightly wider. Right now it's only two meters, so one and two meters wide as well as two meters in length. And so I wanna widen this out. We need to edit this mesh and so we need to go into edit mode. To go into edit mode so that we can manipulate the vertices and stretch them out along the x-axis, we go down here from object mode, which we're currently in, to edit mode. So it didn't look like a whole lot changed, but we have these different vertices. And so if I go ahead and select different vertices, I can now select these. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna select these two vertices on the left. And to do that, I'm going to select the shift key and then click, and that will select both of those. All right, we have our manipulator tool here. And so to move it only on the X axis, I just drag, I select and drag this X axis here, which is red, of course, and I'm gonna drag this out. And so even if I move this up and down, it constrains it just to the X axis. All right, so I wanna put it just about here, but I, I don't know exactly what the measure of unit is for that. That looks about right, but I wanna be precise here because we're going to build a very precise level. And so what you can do is you can hold down the control key and that will snap it to this grid. And so holding down the control key again, we can snap it back and forth. Okay, so release the mouse key and make sure that you're holding down the control key as well. So, so I unselected the mouse key and now I can lift my finger up from the control key. Let's do the same thing with the right vertices here. So click on this vertice without the shift key. And I wanna also select this one. So hold down shift and select and it puts our manipulator tool in the average of the two vertices. And so again, I'm going to click and drag and drag this over. And I'm gonna drag this over one, but I don't know how far uh, to get this pre precise. So hold down the control key and it'll snap right there. Release the mouse button, release the control key. All right, so we're getting the beginnings of our floor here, but what about our walls? So with two vertices on either side here, I am going to raise these up. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side as well in a second here, but I'm gonna start two at a time. So with these two selected, I'm going to hit the E key. And the E key is going to allow me to extrude this in the Z axis. And so I can move this back and forth and it'll look kind of weird if I, if I have a wall that looks like this, well, depending upon what we're, what we're building, I guess, but I wanna constrain it to the Z axis. And the way that we do that is as I'm dragging, and I'm not holding down the mouse key, by the way, I just simply hit the E key and then dragged up. I'm going to hit the Z key. And the Z key is going to allow us to just move it straight up and down along that Z axis. Okay, so I don't actually know how tall the three meters is that I want the wall. So let's start from the bottom, hold down our control key. It's going to snap it to zero, but I'm gonna bring it up and that's gonna be one meter, two meters and three meters. And so that goes off the screen, but that's okay as long as I don't move the mouse and I'm going to click to put that into place. All right, I'm gonna zoom. I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel up to zoom out. 
So now I can see it here and let's, you know, hold down the middle mouse wheel and just kind of move this around so we can see it. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna select this one and then shift select that one. And then again, hit the E key, bring this up just a hair and then hit the Z key so we can see what we're doing. Once we do that, we can hold down the control key and pull this up and that looks about right. So one meter, two meter, three meter, click to set it. Now we have our corridor. All right, so now that I look at it, it might be a little bit too narrow and that's okay because I had the idea that we wanted to make this a little bit wider anyway. So to do that, we're going to select the entire mesh and then scale it or resize it and make it bigger along the X axis. So to select everything, we would hit the A key, but because we already have things selected, if we hit the A key, it actually deselects everything. If we hit the A key again, it selects everything. Now to scale it, what I can do is hit the S key and it'll bring up this little manipulator tool. And if I rotate my mouse around, you can see how it scales and it's doing some funky things. But as I move my mouse away from this origin, like this, you can see that it scales up way big. And if I move it back to that place where it was, it gets really, really small. So this is one way of manipulating our meshes so that they get bigger or smaller. But I want to constrain it again on the x-axis, not the z-axis, but the x-axis this time. And so as I'm doing this, not holding the mouse button at all, I can hit the X key and you can see my X axis brings up here. And now when I scale it, it just gets scaled along the X. So let's scale it to about where the uh, six meters wide is. So three on either side of our Y axis and then hold down the control key and that'll snap it. And it'll snap it to a little bit fewer units than one meter at a time. And so we have to be pretty precise here and just get it to right about there. And so three meters on either side, that's going to be six meters wide. That's going to allow us to have a nice wide corridor. If you're ever questioning how to do scale properly, what you can do and what we'll do in later lessons is put in a reference item. For example, be like a person. The person might be 172, 180 centimeters tall. And you can place that person in the scene and see if those walls are tall enough. I know that for 170, 180 per centimeter person, three meters is gonna be more than enough for our effect. So once you have all that, we're going to hit the tab key to get out of edit mode and go into object mode. Now in object mode, we have this manipulator at the origin here. And if we drag this up, it drags the entire thing up. I'm gonna release it there and then undo that with command or control Z. And we can use snapping out here as well. So if I hold down the control key, I'm gonna move this up and down, but I don't wanna move this at all. I wanna make sure that this object is within the origin. So that little orange yellow dot there is our origin. All right, so feel free to make this corridor a little bit more fancy using the extrude key and, and moving it along the X, Y, or Z axis by constraining it. But this is going to be it for right now. What we're going to show you next is how to export it from Blender using the various settings for Unreal and then import it into Unreal and then place it around in our scene and start building out our level. This game is going to be a dungeon game where the player has to navigate around a maze and we're going to create our maze using these corridors. In future videos, we'll make this corridor a little bit more fancy and add textures and materials to it so it looks really, really good. So I hope you found this video useful. In future videos, we're gonna make this look a lot better. We're going to pull this into Unreal and we're going to slowly build out our game. What we're going to do is we're gonna jump back and forth between Blender and Unreal as we need different assets and as we need to create different pieces of our level or materials and that sort of thing. So don't worry if this is way too simple and don't worry if this is way too over your head or hard. We're gonna revisit all this stuff and we're gonna teach you everything that you need to know in order to build a game in Unreal using assets from Blender. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.